Let's see some errors and let's see how to get help with them. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hytale modding. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk a little bit about some errors that you might encounter, well, maybe have already encountered and of course will encounter in, well, basically everything you write because errors, and that's the first lesson here, are nothing to be afraid of. This is the first thing that you really have to just get comfortable with if you get an error, this does not mean that you've done anything bad. It does not mean that, you know, you failed some way. It's just like, no, coding is a very complex activity. And holding everything in your mind at once is basically impossible. So this actually leads to the sort of idea that if you write some piece of code and it perfectly works the first time around, you're going to be a little suspicious where it's like, that's... It was kind of sus to me because it, it basically never happens. You always rely on errors to show you, oh, th there I have done a tiny mistake. Oh, I forgot this and so on and so forth. So the first thing that we see here, I've already basically prepared this. This is, of course, available as a gist or in the GitHub repository. And here you can basically see, you can uncomment some lines to see example of errors. The first error that you might run into is the following, where you have a cannot find symbol. This is when you have something red in your code and you can't click on it and press Alt and Enter to sort of, you know, import something. You can see uh, it doesn't say import. It says, hey, there's a variable. We can create a field, whatever that means. But there's nothing there. If we were to run the code right now, so first of all, we can see that we have red underlines here. We have red underlines here. We even have this error right here. So we have an error. But if we were still to run this, then you can see what we're going to get is we're going to say, hey, Java cannot find symbol, symbol, which is this variable here, and basically where this, this is located. So you usually will get the location at the very top here. You can see we got line 11, right? Line 11. That's pretty good. So we can actually see, oh, this, it's this line. And we even get the character that it's at, right? So if I were to, for example, start here, you know, I could count one, two, three, four, five, and so on. You can also see the character I'm at currently at the bottom right corner here and if I put in here then you can see 1128 which is exactly where this error has occurred so that's very it's usually nice to see where this error has occurred actually it's in the build here right here so the overall idea is that usually you have you know some sort of a list this is called a stack trace where this error has occurred All right so this would be the first type of error that is well common or is something to be seen and then there's another thing which is called the null pointer exception. Now we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about exceptions in a far more advanced tutorial in this series. However, the idea is basically an exception is, well, basically what it sounds like. It's an exception to what we would have expected to happen. And there are a boatload of different types of exceptions. And the null pointer exception is something that you're going to run into a lot of times. So this happens when something is null. So this means it does not have a value and you're still trying to do something with it. So in this case, we have a string which is null, meaning that it doesn't have a value. And we're going to say, hey, how long is this string? This, of course, doesn't make any sense. The string doesn't exist. Therefore, we're going to get a null pointer exception. So if I run this again, then you will see, there you go, exception in thread main. What that means, we don't need to worry about for the time being and then you can see null pointer exception cannot invoke you know something because this is null right so it even says to you what you what the compiler actually can't do because something is null this is not always the case that it's this specific you might only get null pointer exception right here and then you can see sort of the start of the stack trace so this is the stack trace and you can see at net.com domain main and then you see main.java 16 so this is once again in the 16th line here. And I can even click on this and it will show me exactly where the issue is. So you can see that that's really useful. And these stack traces, they can get really, really long, right? Because there's going to be code that calls other code that's called other code and so on and so forth. So this can get very complicated. No question about it. But usually you can start sort of at the top and you can see, okay, this is the immediate you know, issue, this is where it's at, and then you can go through it, basically. Then, basically, last but not least, actually, almost the most important thing, if you ever see something like process finished with exit code 1, or 
finished with non-zero exit code. Something like this, right? So this is actually something we have seen in the run here as well, right? Process finished with exit code one, for example. It might be a minus one, it might be something else. If you ever see this and you are like, hey, I have this issue and you post just that, that everyone, literally everyone who knows a little bit of Java knows that you know nothing about Java or programming in general. Now, this is not the worst thing ever, right? Of course, we all learn, we all start somewhere. However, this is also very frustrating for the people who are actually want to try to help you because if you post this, it doesn't give you any information other than there has been an issue. And that really is not helpful at all. So usually you don't want to only post this. You also want to post something with an error log or an output or an exception. So as we've seen in the run here, you can see I could just post this. Hey, I have an issue. You post this process finish with exit code one. Doesn't help anyone. It's probably just going to annoy the people who want to help you. So what you do is you just post the entire log here. Doesn't matter. Or if you, you know, if you can see, hey, this is the actual log here. This is the stack trace. Let's take this, copy this over and give that to the person who might help us. Or help you and yeah that's basically one of the things i definitely wanted to mention that's very important to note and of course you know it it can still happen from time to time i just wanted to tell you that this is basically a thing that happens more often than you might think and of course it's totally fine we all start somewhere however this is of course something that you know we can mitigate and there you go right but that would already be for this tutorial right here i hope you found this useful and you learned something new if you did i would of course appreciate a like and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one so yeah